So for those of us who haven't met yet, I'm Jen Sinclair. I'm a fitness writer and personal trainer at the Movement Minneapolis in Minneapolis. Um, and I do some online coaching as well. I like the in real, in real life stuff a lot more though, to be honest. Uh, I have a pretty ecle eclectic training background from kettlebells to Olympic lifting to CrossFit to, to sandbags to body weight training. And I, the answer is I like all of it. And I got into all of it because of my background as a writer, because I didn't know how to write about things. I didn't know how to, I, writing how to do a squat terrified me. I could do it because I came from a, an athletic background, but trying to, just, to, trying to coach somebody else through it was rough. So I figured I needed to get good at that side of things. So that's how I ended up kind of dabbling in everything. Uh, I played rugby th for 13 years and nine of those were on the US team. And as part of playing rugby, I was part of this little bubble, this like really, like really amazing body acceptance bubble where n different body shapes and sizes were not only celebrated, but absolutely necessary for the game. So I count myself lucky to be part of that bubble. The other bubble I was part of was, I was with Experience Life Magazine for nine years as their editorial director of fitness. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the Food Babe cover controversy this week. That notwithstanding, and I could tell you a long hypothetical story later if you ever wanna hear it about how that happened and what they're doing about it. Uh, it's still a great place to go for fitness information. Like you don't have to deal with that bullshitty, uh, the voice of like the skinny jeans and the how, how little can you get and how shredded could your abs get. Like you don't have to deal with that there. So if you're, if you're looking for a better magazine for women, uh, it's, if it's for women and men, um, that doesn't condescend to you, that's still a good place to go. What it's called Experience Life. And we talk about, I mean, so in that magazine, before I left, like, I mean, we talk more about uh, lifting methodologies than the kinds of things, like the, than the shrinking. And like German volume training, rest pause training, Molly mentioned that earlier, barbell circuits, et cetera, et cetera. Now, outside of those bubbles and outside of the bubbles that you've probably created for yourself, that's what we're doing here, right? Is like bringing people into the bubble. And I think that that's the idea. Uh, outside of that, it's pretty tr tricky terrain though, right? Everything is pink. No offense to that, but um, <laughs> like it's, it, and everything is little. And I think we kind of think of ourselves as pioneers, right? We're like, we're, we're forging ahead, we're paving the way, we're showing people what's possible and we're making it okay to do more. And like, we're the first ones here, right? No, no, we're not. This has been going on since the 16th century, actually. So women have been in the strength game for a really long time, since the very beginning. And strength sports were really popular for women, even. Uh, we would, like, I think historically and still, we struggle getting recognition in a lot of sports. But back as far as the 1880s, women were, the strength sports were super popular, right alongside the men. They were getting covered in the media uh, back then. And they would draw huge crowds to watch them perform. So while we're doing one, now I think that we then got away from that, right? And we got away, like once wayfishness became popular, like that's, that's the trend we, we went with for a while. And now we're the ones bringing it back. And that's super cool. And we're showing other people what's possible. But I think it's also important that we remind ourselves what's possible. And that we, I, I'm gonna show you some, I'm gonna introduce you to some women just really briefly to inspire you to want to do this like weird, wild stuff and, to, and to, to consider what might be possible for ourselves. I think I also want to remind, I also want to like remind us that strength doesn't have to be this very rigid structured thing where you know, it's all in the sagittal plane and it looks like this and if you move outside the sagittal plane, everything will explode. Um, and in fact, like, it, sometimes moving outside that plane really helps pain. And I want to get us asking more about, more questions in general, like it, in particular, what feels good for me? And for your clients, what feels good for them? And to kind of sort it out as we go. So today we're going to learn, we're going to cover three lifts. Three of them are weird and wild, and one of them is straight up rad. Pure excellence, the pull-up, obviously. And then I'm going to teach you how to nail them yourselves. But like I said, let's get in the mood to celebrate strength as women. So this is the great Sandwina. Now she took her, that's her husband, by the way. She, he was part of her show. Uh, she took her name from an old time strongman, a really famous old time strongman named Eugene Sandow, Sandow or Sandow, I'm not sure how to say it. And then later ended up beating him in a strength competition, which is pretty cool. Six feet tall, 187 pounds, 17 inch biceps. Cool, right? I just got a little goosebumps. 
especially since somebody told me today that I look smaller than I do online. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go lift after this. <laughs> These are some of her feats. You used her man, and I'll tell you how she met him in a minute. Used her man as a dumbbell. That was her dumbbell. <laughs> she balanced a carousel of 14 people on her shoulders, would bend iron bars in half, like I said, beat Eugene himself uh, in an Atlas Stone competition. And then her father, so they, the whole family traveled as part of a circus, and her father would dare the men in the audience, like, wrestle my daughter. She went undefeated. And that's how she met her husband. Uh, he said, like, oh, the next thing I knew, I was being turned, the world was being turned on its side, and, and then he was in love. <laughs> so that's how they got together. Next up, Vulcana. Like, by the way, if you're looking for an alter ego, like, I strongly recommend you look at the names that they went by. Maybe adopt one of those. So she performed, she also performed with her husband, although she called him her brother in, it was just twisted, in their shows. <laughs> her specialty, too, was lifting men. Some of her feats, she carried, imagine being in junior high and you carried the school organ. <laughs> That's how she made friends. She performed the Tomb of Hercules, so in a back bend, platform on her belly, two horses and two men, and supported that weight, right? I mean, strength is weird. She could bent press, and this one's important for us today. She could bent press 124 pounds, and some reports say 145. Like, I am this close to being able to lock out 88 pounds, and I'm super excited about that, but I'm more excited to know that this is possible, and now my ceiling is raised. Oh, you'll see. It's a, it's a, I'll show you a picture in a little bit instead of diving down under here right now. So she is, she's kind of a turn of the century embodiment of what my company Thrive is today. Like it, she, she doesn't, she, she didn't believe and she was a strong proponent of strength and feminine beauty not necessarily being separate things. That strong is absolutely beautiful. So look at some of these lifts. I know the picture is fuzzy. Sorry about the slides again. Uh, here's a popular one. I'm going to put some cement on my belly and I want you to sit me, hit me with a sledgehammer <laughs> while I'm in a back bend. No big deal. The, the jaw strength ones are, all, are also pretty weird. Like a, there are a lot of feats of strength. Like I'm going to hold people from my teeth. Like I'm not actually particularly interested in either of those for myself, but I don't want to limit you guys if that's a direction you want to go. I know, right? They're beautiful. And then you've probably heard of Pudgy Stockton already. She's pretty well known. She had wanted to lose weight. She was a telephone operator. Her boyfriend at the time, her later husband, gave her some dumbbells and she ended up starting to lift. And then they ended up, she ended up starting her own gym and performing uh, in, on the Santa Monica Pier with her later husband. Her business card said foremost physical culturalist. Another like suggestion in case you're like looking for new ideas for the business cards. Um, she also she also uh, wrote a column called Barbells for a magazine in the early 1900s. Her focus was on athleticism, which I love. Not not like this is how you're going to look. She did end up starting to lift because she wanted to look better. But then as it happens with strength, you start lifting and then you're like, wait, but look what I can do. I don't care how I look as much like as look at what I can lift. And that's the addictive part. And look how little she is. Two women from each arm could balance an adult man on her shoulders. She's five foot one and 115 pounds. If you look back through some of this stuff, the overhead pressing especially is what stands out about these women. Like, This is our history. This is our real history. Not, not the pink dumbbells. Some of the lifts are fucking weird. Sorry. Bleep. <laughs> Anything is possible, and I want you to find out for yourself what is possible. And I want you to be willing to ask that question of yourself every time you train. Can I do that? Can I do that? Can I do that? That's the question. All right, so the bent press. Here we go. Yep. 
It requires crazy, and I'm going to borrow Karen here in a minute, if you're warm. I, I mean, there isn't even a kettlebell big enough for you here, but you'll have to make do. It requires mad hip mobility, shoulder, uh, thoracic spine mobility, shoulder stabi both stability and uh, mobility, and crazy, crazy core strength. That's, that's uh, what all three of these lifts have in common, core strength, that'll keep coming up. The cool thing is this lift also develops those same characteristics. So it's not like you have to become a perfectly mobile, stable human and then try this. You can work into it, especially unweighted and with very light weights. I apologize in advance. It's at least a two session drill. Like it's, it's a, I would say at least an intermediate kettlebell lift, but fuck it, we're gonna go for it today. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be awkward. Both this one and the Jefferson deadlift, probably gonna be fairly awkward the first time through. It's okay, like it'll be, it's for with both of these lifts, the first time I did it, I was like, I don't like it. I don't, I'm not gonna do it again. Of course I did it again. And I was like, I love it. You know, like it, it catches hold fast, so give it a chance. It also is gonna feel pretty different from what you're used to, if you're not used to this. So here's what it looks like. Here's, and I'll, yes, yeah, look familiar? Vegas kettlebell guy here. And everybody's bent press, this is why I like it so, why I like bent press and Jefferson deadlift so much, is everyone's looks a little bit different. There isn't a right answer for exactly the body position. It's some semblance of a cousin of a windmill, and his is very much windmill-esque, where the legs stay reasonably straight and the shoulders go down in a way. And you'll notice, so it's probably because this weight is too light in the picture, but you see that the weight raises a little bit. The bent press is actually not a press up, it's a press yourself down. So normally the, the kettlebell probably wouldn't even raise that high between start and finish. And I tried to piece together, I wanted, I wanted some women show, uh, uh, showing the bent press. So this is my start position for the bent press. I don't know why, but I don't have the end, but I do have Karen Smith in an end position. Look how pretty that is. And hers in this picture, we talked about it earlier today, she says, the, so this is again like the windmill variation and, and that's legs mostly straight. The, the other option for this is kind of a, an overhead squat thing. So it's gonna depend on your, how, how mobile your body is and what feels more comfortable for you. Most people end up doing a hybrid between the two. So the overhead squat one ends up being more of a bent legs. Like you're, you're going down to escape the weight rather than shoulders alone, your whole body goes down. It's gonna be somewhere in the middle. So things to remember, you're not pressing the weight up, you're pressing yourself down, especially for your shoulders. Like every single move you make like you're, you're with, uh, like pushing the weight away, your, your shoulders have to move at exactly that same rate. If you take it with you for a second, the weight falls or it comes down or you can't straighten your arm. So it's, this is a, it's a relationship, it's a give and take. I'm just smacking my, my microphone over and over, aren't I? All right, good, yep. <laughs> anyway, so you're, you're in this relationship, straight, 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 down, down, down. What the bent press does, it's get, it gets you accustomed to having just ridiculous amounts of weight overhead. I mean, can I tell you, I cannot strict overhead press 88 pounds. Like, I'm not used to having one arm, you know, like, I'm not, I, I, that's not my press, but that is very nearly my bent press. So it can help you bust through some plateaus on pressing, just getting used to that overhead position. Now, this next one uh, depends, as the answer always is in fitness. It can be a better option for people who have some sort of like shoulder mobility issues or, so, or uh, <coughs> shoulder pain issues. My husband, and don't tell him I use this word, but he's terrible at pressing. I mean like pathetic a little bit. Uh, and it's because his shoulder, like he's a great deadlifter, I'll say that too, um, but he, he's always had a trick shoulder. Hurts if he does push-ups, bench, overhead press, like all of those are out. Now bent press, he's basically in world record territory right now. Like he can bent press just about it. He's at 170 now, very nearly 185. His body weight is 195. So he's very, like, he's very close. He's, his goal is a body weight bent press. He can't press except for bent press. Now I do recommend starting unweighted, of course. The cues for this. Sassy hip. Come on up. So I'm gonna have, I, you wanna see, we wanna see what one looks like? I wish we had a pedestal for you. A big wide pedestal, but it's being occupied. Here, let's move it out. 
I think that's I'll talk about yeah you go ahead and go ahead and uh, demonstrate so we'll have her do one first and then we'll talk about the cues is that wide enough the box yeah. okay look how sassy the hip is <laughs> this is important to remember so the elbow like and, and I love it yeah exactly so if you're making this face that's a good start position for the <laughs> bent press like people say rest it on your lats the way I learned it from Max Shank, and he's excellent at teaching this, is he's like, put your elbow in your sacrum. You know where that is. So keep corkscrewing. Here's your start position. Okay, perfect. So she's gripping, Karen's gripping the horn, and that's gonna fire up her rotator cuff. And then she's gonna keep that forearm vertical while she's gonna back that ass up. Okay, Corking's, corkscrew down, so she's spiraling almost. The, the earth is her wine bottle. Down, 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 stands right back up. Do you mind doing one more? Perfect, thank you. So here's what, I, I told you that it was not an upward press. All she's doing is straightening her arm like this. Her elbow stays, stays near her side. This is the press. So as long as you move your shoulders down, you don't have to press up. Does that make sense for everybody? Pretty cool looking, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the best cues for this are like, it's because even though you know like, all right, I'm supposed to straighten my arm. I want you to think about this weight as gross. It's gross, okay, get it away from you. Ew, 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 all the way down. So that's the bent press. You wanna, let's, let's just stand up where we are and get, a, get, a, like, get your notepad and put some armpit on it for a minute. Here's the drill. It's a clutch purse. You're gonna put the clutch purse and you're gonna smash it under your lats and there goes your elbow under your sacrum. You're gonna punch somebody, they're over at the wall, but I'm afraid to tell you that you can't move your lower body. So how are you gonna punch them? You can only move your upper body away. Weird, right? And then stand up. And I hear like a big exhale, yep, because the bent press takes forever and you kinda of have to hold your breath for a really long time. So we'll hear a lot of like, ah, on the stand up, that's fine. All right, let's do it again. So you're gonna punch somebody, you're only moving your upper body away. Good, this is the worst punch in the history of punches. <laughs> Very ineffective. But you feel how weird that is? Let's do the other side. Worst punch coming right up. You can only move your upper body. Good, oh you guys look so good. This is, and I see so many sassy hips, I love it. Super sassy. All right, who wants to take off their shoes? I mean, we gotta work with what we have here. Like, look, look at this room. So take off a shoe. If, if, who here has done the TGU drill with a shoe balanced on top of their fist? Ah, good, like a lot of people then. So the same thing works for the bent press because you're gonna do that punch drill, only this time your knuckles face the ceiling the entire time. So here you go, put it on, put it on your sacrum, and now, Knuckles face the ceiling, but you're still doing that weird punch. Good, go down, shoulders go down away from it until you can straighten your arm. Oh my God, I love it, you guys, good job. I didn't tell you something that is gonna be really important. Okay, feet stand about shoulder width apart, roundabout, so it's gonna be between hip and shoulder width apart, whatever's comfortable for you. Now lift your toes up and rotate them about 45 degrees. This is the cousin of the windmill, so the start position is really, really similar, foot-wise. So now, your hiding place is between your legs. Like, that's where you have to go to hide from this weight. Now, push back, get it away, get it away, get it away, get it away. Shoulders have to go down. Don't be afraid to bend your legs and go hide between the space between your feet. All the way down, straight arm, stand back up. Oh my God, I, didn't, I only heard a shoe or two and I almost dropped my own. How'd that feel? Odd? Yes. Super odd. But good, right? Isn't it like it's one of those lifts that's like, why does that feel so good here? It's because we never do this. All right, have a seat. I might put my shoes back on so I feel more professional. All right, Jefferson deadlift. Are you with me? You're ready to get weird still? You guys are a very open group, I appreciate it. 
it is another two session lift. It's gonna feel pretty odd the first time you do it. Although some people, if you've got really great hip mobility, it clicks right away. So is this gonna help us get a nice bum like you? Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is making me sweat and I like it. <laughs> um, so the Jefferson deadlift is also sometimes called the Jefferson squat because it's kind of a hybrid between the two. So to make a really long story short, when I met my now husband, I told him, listen, I can't deadlift. That's the only thing I can't do. I'd been doing CrossFit and coaching CrossFit for a few years. And every, every deadlift I ever did was conventional sagittal plane. I don't think I'd moved outside of that in two and a half years at that point. And every time I deadlifted, I had back pain. So I met him. And he, he does this intuitive training protocol called gym movement. If you want to know more about that, we can talk about that later. Uh, and he was like, yes, you can deadlift. He's very cocky, that's just the way he is. So he showed me the intuitive training protocol, which involves finding the right variation for you on any given day. The deadlift variation, the only one that tested well for quite a while for me was the Jefferson deadlift. And it's because I think that you, you, it doesn't involve so much low back, not as much low back as any of the other deadlift variations. Within two months, I could do any deadlift variation without pain. This is after quite a long time of pain. And it, it was pretty magic. And we find this, like anecdotally, we find that the Jefferson deadlift, even though the people who only want to do this, they see the Jefferson and they're like, no, no, you can't. Your spine will shoot out of your head. Yeah. But <laughs> we actually haven't had that happen yet. And anecdotally, it's been really nice for back pain because it gets that 360 degree core involved. It's a magic. Like three months. I know, right? I can't believe how fast it goes. I'm, it always makes me mad I didn't know about it before. So if you see this around, this is like, I'm trying my best to make this popular. So I would love if you joined it, if you like it. This is what it looks like. So you're standing straddling a barbell. And I, it's hard to find good Jefferson. Just look how satisfied I look in the second picture. <laughs> That's what the Jefferson can do for you. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to use just the barbell with this. And for some people, the barbell, it's just too hard to get down in that position. You can do two things. Number one, you can elevate the implement. In this case, a barbell, you can just raise it up. And that is basically the drill that I use. Like That's the progression for, uh, for the, from the floor to Jefferson, is to raise it up. Raise it up as high as you need to in order for it to feel good. Um, or you can use and or you can use a different implement. Sometimes people feel more comfortable when they're using two kettlebells. Doesn't, they don't have to be the same size. That's not important. It's just then they can rotate their hands if they don't have, if, they, if they're not super comfortable in that like locked in position of the barbell deadlift. If I forget to say this later, your front hand is your butt, butt grabber hands. Okay, that's what I call it because it's open. Like that's the open hand, back hand. The ones, that's the one that you're riding the pony, okay? <laughs> Good to know. Foot stance is going to vary from person to person. Some people do the Jefferson, like both feet are like facing 45 degrees and they're, and they're deadlifting like this. I find with a lot of women, and I don't know why, and I, I'm guessing that Elsbeth could probably tell me a little more about this, but I'm finding with a lot of women that if they face their feet out at like nine, about 90 degrees, they're able to go get that a little more easily. And as long as your knees track over your toes, I don't really care about which way your feet are, feet are facing. There isn't a right answer. Love it. If you're worried about getting booped in the V, this was, I did a workshop in Philly not too long ago and I'm like, this woman said, what if I'm getting booped in the V? And I'm like, I'm only gonna say that now. <laughs> that is a hand position issue, usually. If your hands are too wide, it brings the bar up into your V. Um, if you are one of these people who have just, and I, I've actually never encountered it in real life. Like every dude is like, yeah. no, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> Dangerous. I'm like, yeah, right. Listen, it's not that big. I'm guessing. <laughs> so hand, hand width makes all the difference. Or you can just use two kettlebells if you're, if you're really booping yourself. As far as operationally, you're going to switch which leg is forward each set. Cues on this one, and here's where the Jefferson goes wrong the first time you do it. The back heel comes up. People are so trying, like they're trying to get into position, and so that back heel pops up. It's just like a squat, it's just like a deadlift. 
in that I want you to be driving through your heels. So if that means you need to adjust your width of your stance, it's okay, you're not in a Minneapolis airport bathroom, nobody will arrest you for the width of your stance. You <laughs> get that? Uh, so you, you might be out here or you might be here. It's gonna depend on your hip mobility and, and uh, um, among other things. Vertical torso and your chest is always gonna be facing forward. Now, so this is where you get the rotation and the anti-rotation because you're rotating into position, you're going to get the barbell, and as you stand up, it's going to try to spin on you. So then you are now in charge of remaining in that path. This is what makes it so crazy good for your core. And you're gonna split yourself right up the middle. What happens, because we have the word deadlift stuck in our heads, is that we tip our torso over too much, come up and on the way, hit the hamstring and slide into position. So if that's happening for you, it's usually like widen the stance and go get it with a more vertical torso. The lone drill for this, again, is shorten the range of motion. Shorten the range of motion to where it's comfortable for you. For Because some people aren't actually, like they're not able to go all the way to the floor to get it. That's really common, not yet. Shorten the range of motion, practice then. In, the body adapts in funny ways. We don't have to force it into adaptation. We don't have to say like, I'm gonna do it from the floor until I can do it from the floor. Nope, you can do it from above the floor and then work your way down. Like you'll adapt even if you don't force your way through it. Ooh, and the pull up. All right, last but not least. And this one, because there's so much noise out there, I might just do like a mini pull up station in the hands on later for if anybody wants to stop by. Otherwise, we'll just talk through the cues on this one just because it is so loud out there right now. And then we'll actually get to playing on the bent press and the Jefferson and that will probably do us for time today. All right, but back to the pull-up. One, of, it can be one of the most elusive lifts for women, but it is possible for most. Anybody see, everybody saw the New York Times article that said why women can't do pull-ups. No. Anybody agree with that? No. Get out. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the most accurate gauges of strength to body weight ratio that there is. So it is a very cool goal. Jen, is this you? Yes. You gotta watch Jen Comas Keck's YouTube videos of pull-ups because she embodies the cues that I use and I'm pretty sure that she probably hasn't heard them from the same places that I use them for but she's the most intuitive puller upper I've ever seen. And you see how she's so high at the top that she's looking down as if she pities the fools beneath her. <laughs> that is so important. That finish position. Now, this is a chin up technically, I just saw that, damn it. But, you know, chin up, pull up. Same, same cues apply actually. So body weight can make a big difference, but so can drills, and so can a whole lot of heavy pulls. What I find with clients who come in and say, I can't do a pull-up, I'm like, well, what have you been doing to get to a pull-up? It's like a huge band yeah. and it's some like little dumbbell rows. <laughs> you think this is gonna get you to a pull-up? Nope, we gotta like heavy pull whenever possible. I'm keeping this one simple because there is one cue, like we've all, like most of us have, have you know, coached our way through, through a pull-up. This though was the eye opener for me. And this is another Max Shank special. If I were to say, what's a stronger pull? Behind the neck, down, or like a nice big violent horizontal pull? Which one, would anybody pick this one? Nope, you all heard of the hollow body position? Where this is your position? What does that look like to you? Does that look like a strong pull position? No, it becomes a strong pull position on the way up but at the bottom, it's actually a pretty terrible pole position, in my opinion. And this is, you know, like there isn't a right answer in fitness and it, what works for you might not be what works for somebody else. But I've seen over and over people who are close to a pull up get it. And is there somebody who's really close today? Like, like I've been trying this for months and I can't quite get there. Yeah, okay, well let's practice this later. Find me at the, at the hands-on. So think about oh, uh, when, you, when you're hanging from the bar, I want you to think about an open joints position. I want you to think about raising your chest to the bar, just rotating your chest up. Scapular pull-ups is what this is. So like you're shifting your scapula down so that your chest is facing the bar. You're bending the bar in half so that your chest is facing the bar to prepare for that nice big violent horizontal pull. Once you're there, 
big pull, and then you can start shifting into that hollow body position where you engage your abs more. You bring your feet forward together, squeeze your legs together, and then you close the joints up. So this is why I brought Jen Comas Cack up is because she she, this is what she does. She starts in an open pull up position, open joints position, pulls, closes it up, pities the fools at the top. <laughs> That's how to do a pull up. It's the best way to do a pull up. I am almost off of bands now because bands help you at the bottom where not very many people need to be helped. Like, does it, do people, like, it does happen, but are most of us failing a pull up right here? No, it's closer to like here. And that's when bands just abandon you, pun intended. <laughs> so I like to use a really tall box now these days. I'll set it up right underneath a pull up bar and it has to be so tall that you're able to finish with your throat against the bar looking down. So you might have to like build a little plate structure on top of the box. Like it just depends on what your gym has available. You're gonna put one leg on the box and then you're only gonna help get up as much as you need to with the standing leg. The other leg is, is emulating what it would be if you were hanging. Open joints to closed joints. When I see the arms start to shake just a little bit, that's, when I, that's how much resistance I wanna see. Otherwise you're just doing pistols. Eccentrics, so hop to the top, a nice slow drop, another one for really getting that pull up. And isometrics, if you're not quite there, like holding different positions. And like, don't think that you only have to hold this position. Like pick a point in the lift and hold whatever you can hold. How to do a pull up, do pull ups often, do pull up drills often, just not to failure. Fail and you teach your body to fail. 